How's it going everyone? Needle Mouse here. When I say the words Chow Garden, what do you think of? An amazing little side game that must come back? Or a thing that Sonic fans won't stop crying to Sonic Team about so it can come back? To say that the Chow Garden is one of the most wanted and debated things in Sonic history is an understatement. Hundreds of Sonic fans have been pleading with Sonic Team and Sega to give us the Chow Garden. And apart from this... I wonder if there's a Chow Garden hidden around here. Eh, might not be the right climate. STOP DOING THIS SEG- We haven't seen it in literal decades. The Chow Garden was last seen in Sonic Advance 2. But the last real Chow Garden was seen in Sonic Adventure 2. And while there have been many leaks of a brand new mobile Chow game, many people still wanted to return in a mainline Sonic game. Now as far as my experience goes, I love the Chow Garden, both in SA1 and SA2. But should this fan favorite sad game even return in a future Sonic game? Or should it just be left in the dust forever? Let's find out. But first, let's get a little background. During the creation of Sonic Adventures, Sonic Team wanted an extra side game added that also had a pretty big tie-in into the story. Sonic Team would go on to then create the little minigame that we now know as the Chow Garden. You can enter them from the hub worlds, and they're all actually different de depending on which hub world you're in. You have one in the hotel at Station Square, one at the Air Carrier, and one in Mystic Ruins. During regular gameplay, Sonic and Co. could collect these small animals by defeating badniks. These small animals would be transported and went to the set 3 available child garden. In each garden, there will be eggs that you can hatch by literally throwing them at a wall. That, that doesn't seem very... healthy for the chow. But anyway, then your chow will hatch. You can have up to 8 chow per garden, and to get rid of them, you can break your heart and say goodbye to your baby child. I literally cannot. I mean, look at him. Look at, look at the little face. That's so sad. You can give them animals so they can inherit their traits. And to level them up, you can go to the black market and use your rings that you get in regular levels to buy items. By feeding your child, it'll make them stronger and stronger. You can level up either flight, swim speed, running speed, power, or stamina. The more you level them up, the easier it is to enter them into races and win. Yeah, which is another really cool thing. You can enter them into races and other mini games within this mini game. But the Dreamcast also had this really cool thing known as the VMU. You could transfer your chow to it and then bring it to your friend's house and show it off. That's just awesome. You can actually do that in the Dreamcast version of SA2 as well, but it also has an extra little thing that, that we'll get to talk about later. Overall, the massive variety of chows you can make in SA1 is amazing, but it somehow is even more complicated and even more diverse in the next game. On to the greatest Chow Garden ever. This is the Chow Garden most people know and love. Sonic Adventure 2 really just looked at SA1's Chow Garden and said, nah, I'd win. I'd win. The amount of things you can do in this Chow Garden is insane. Starting out with how you access it. Instead of just simply entering them through the hub world, since there are no hub worlds in SA2, you have to find these Chow crates within the levels that will give you a Chow key. Make it to the end of the level and you will enter the Chow Garden hub. There are so many things to do here. Whether you want to enter the actual garden, go to the dog to name and check up your Chow, or to enter them in races, the possibilities are literally endless, pun intended. There are once again three Chow Gardens, but two of them are initially locked. To access them, you must make a Hero and Dark Chow to be able to enter the Hero and Dark Gardens respectively. And the environments for both are so cool, and I especially enjoy the Chow Garden. I for some reason get this nostalgic feeling, even though I've never actually gotten them until recently. It's really odd, but I just love sitting around in it and just looking. It's really weird. The animals once again make a return, but the way you get them is a little different. The animals will be just sort of around the levels, you know, just running around. 
the more rare ones will be much more difficult to find than the easy ones, and you can just pick them up by just running into them. You can also find animals by whistling next to these pipes. The small animal will then pop out and you can pick it up. But what do the robots drop now? They drop chaos drives, these small multicolored shards of sorts that allow you to raise the levels of your chow. Depending on which color you are, it will raise a certain stat. Just like with the Sonic Adventure version, if you want to win races, or any of the other really fun mini games, you have to level up your chow as much as you can. Winning races will give you emblems needed to 100% Sonic Adventure 2 and unlock Green Hell Zone. There are actually so many things to talk about in this garden to the point where a whole separate video is necessary, which I honestly don't know if I'll make, but anyway, there is one more garden we need to talk about. I always had a soft spot for the advanced games. All three are real good in my eyes, but the first two advanced games had a tiny chow garden. While this little garden is worse than either SA1s or SA2s, it's still very cool on its own. You can also play mini games and earn rings and then buy more food and special items for your chow, which you can have I believe only one of. While not as expansive as the other gardens, it's really fun, especially if you take into consideration that you can literally transfer your Chao from your GameCube to the Game Boy Advance and vice versa. Technology. Technology! Like, people in the 1800s were like, oh jolly, those blokes will have flying cars, mate. Nah, we have Chao Gardens, baby. What? Yeah, this is cool as hell. It is an evolution of the Dreamcast VMU to make it even cooler. I love this little thing that they added, and it's all strange that it isn't in Sonic Advance 3. Alright, and that's all the notable Chao Garden appearances in Sonic history. And apart from little teasers and references, there hasn't really ever been anything like it. Sonic Team, and especially head of Sonic Team, Takashi Izuka, have shown interest in bringing it back, but for some reason, they never have. Things do seem bright, with the new Child Garden game coming to mobile devices, it may pave the way for the minigame to return to mainland Sonic game. And if it does, I would be a very happy guy. I honestly loved my times with all three Chao Gardens. Whether it's exploring the hub worlds to find the Chao Gardens in Sonic Adventure 1, the sheer diversity of the Chao Garden in Sonic Adventure 2, as well as the dark and hero Chao Garden being some of my favorite environments in the game for some reason, or the adorable inclusion of the tiny Chao Garden in Sonic Advance, I kind of adore spending my time in these gardens and raising these adorable little creatures. I would be over the moon if a Chao Garden returned in a future Sonic game. And it's safe to say that I think most Sonic fans 100% would. Oh, the Chao Gardens. Yeah, they're pretty overrated to be honest. Pointless even. Mods, can we kill this guy? Anyway, thank you guys all so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day wherever you are in the world. And I'll see you all next time. Ciao! And it's never been more appropriate.